So I'm a huge fan of the Banana Republic Icon line. And when I found out they, they launched three brand new fragrances within the line, I was so excited. And I finally have all three in my collection. And we're going to be talking about Midnight Hour, Tuberose Overdose, and Velvet Pomegranate. So stay tuned and hear my thoughts on all three of these. Hey, what's going on guys? Hunter here and welcome back to my channel. And if you are new, what I do is I make fragrance related content. So if you love fragrance, it's going to smash the subscribe button down below. But that's right guys, we'll be talking about three brand new fragrances from the House of Banana Republic, which I am a huge fan of. If you guys didn't know, I actually own all 14 of the original Icon fragrances, which I actually did a ranking of all of them from my least favorite to my favorite. And then they just came out with three more I believe this might be like a limited or like um, some kind of exclusive line because it says um, Colizone Reservada, which I'm not sure exactly what that means. I don't know. It kind of sounds like some like um, aquatic um, place or something like that. But yeah, three brand new ones within the Icon collection, guys. And one of these I was very excited about when they first announced it and when I heard the notes and stuff with it, but we'll talk about that. Now, before we go ahead and talk about these three fragrances, I do want to shout out So Avant Garde for sending all three of these fragrances out for review. That's not going to persuade my opinion or anything like that. They are a distributor for Banana Republic and a bunch of other designer and niche houses. So definitely check them out. And I hooked you guys up with a discount code for 15% off of your order of these fragrances or anything off of the website the code is frag hunter 15 so i'll leave all that information down below so go ahead and check them out so let's start off by looking at the packaging i'm going to show you one package for all three of them because they are all the same just color changes and stuff like that but it is very nice packaging as you see it does come in this nice cardboard and man these colors of these boxes look incredible like uh, metal rain grassland and then all three of these which are the last five launches which i obviously do own um but on the front you do have a sticker tuberose uh overdose eau de parfum which is nice so these all are all eau de parfum concentrations and they are also all 75 mils so pretty decent juice size as well and then it opens up kind of like a um like a book so to say with your fragrance that sits inside there snug me so yeah very high quality almost niche like packaging guys so that's what I do like. And let's look at the bottle really quick. With these bottles, they are actually very, very heavy, which is nice. They are see-through as you see, but with tuberose overdose, it kind of has this kind of um, orange bottle, pinkish orange. It looks incredible. The caps actually do click into place very snugly, so you can't pick it up by the cap. And these are completely metal caps, very heavy as well. And they all have this leather ring that wraps around the atomizer also. And then on the bottom, you do, of course, have your batch code and down there as well to pretty much see when your product was produced with that batch code. So, yeah, very high quality packaging and presentation within these Banana Republic Icon line. Definitely impressed. So let's start this off talking about the one that actually piqued my interest the most and see if it was actually worth the hype. And of course, I'm speaking about Midnight Hour. And look at this kind of like dark purple navy blue bottle, man. That looks incredible. But... What actually piqued my interest about Midnight Hour is I heard that this actually contained agarwood or oud, also known as. And if you didn't know, I'm a huge fan of oud mosaic, which is within the icon line. And spoiler alert, that actually came in at number one within my ranking. So that was my favorite. And that one comes across a little bit dirty, earthy, barnyardy kind of oud. And I think it's one of the best entry level oud fragrances money can buy. So yeah, if you love oud, you might want to check out that one as well. But this also contains oud as well with a twist, guys. So let's go ahead and spray this and I'll tell you guys what I think about Midnight Hour. Just remind myself of this fragrance and check out the atomizer as well. Very nice atomizers. Look at that, man. That is nice. It sprays pretty wide. You get a bunch of distribution of fragrance. So with Midnight Hour, this is a very unique oud fragrance. In the opening, I get a very exotic, almost tropical mango note in this fragrance and it's very very green almost sheeper like guys 
It's a beautiful tropical opening. And the first time I'd smelled this, I wasn't honestly expecting this kind of opening or this kind of fragrance at all when I just heard of oud. I was like, okay, it's gonna be like kind of a, a darker winter fall kind of fragrance. This one is not that guys. I loved what Banana Republic did with this fragrance, making it a very versatile oud fragrance that can be worn in the spring and summer because as we all know, ouds usually only work for fall and winter because they can be kind of pungent. They can be very dark, woody, and they just work best for those kind of seasons. But this one is gonna be your spring, summer oud fragrance that you can wear, guys. And I think that is awesome and very unique. But with this fragrance, you're gonna have to love the note of mango. It's very, very fruity in the opening, guys. Heavy, heavy dose of mango. So. If you don't like mango, you probably won't like this one, but if you do, you're absolutely gonna fall in love with this fragrance. For me, mango is not my favorite fruit by any means. There's a bunch of other fruits that I prefer, but mango absolutely has its place in fragrances because it makes it very exotic, very tropical, kind of like um, you're out on a beach by the ocean. That's the kind of vibe I get with this fragrance. And I believe it's actually mango skin, so it is a little bit tart. I get a lot of greenness. I don't know if I'm, it has some kind of like crushed leaves, I think is what was listed. So it's very, very green, very fruity and a little bit tart, but man, that mango note is very, very solid. And it makes it very unique within my collection because I believe I have only one other fragrance with the note of mango. So that is awesome. So now when I'm craving mango, I have another option to reach for, for those nice warm spring, summer days or nights because like this one says, midnight hour. This is gonna be more of like um, your date night kind of evening time fragrance in my opinion because even though it opens up with that very fruity, exotic mango note, it does dry down to a nice earthy kind of oud that is really similar to the oud you find in oud mosaic. So it does have a nice barnyardy kind of twist to it, which I love. I don't love my ouds to be clean. I like them to be a little bit almost animalic very dirty, very woody and earthy because of course that's how oud is actually supposed to smell because of what it actually is. If you don't know, oud is actually a moldy wood that gets infested with fungus and then it produces that kind of uh, scent profile and it's done very, very well in Midnight Hour. But of course, alongside the oud in the dry down, you do have musk, which is a nice, kind of a clean musk, but you also have a nice earthy patchouli. And I think it all works so perfect blended together. You have obviously the green leaves, kind of like crushed green leaves in the opening. You have that mango skin, which is a little bit tart. You also have ginger, which I didn't note on, but yeah, smelling it now, I do pick up on a lot of ginger. Ginger is not my favorite note either, but it does give it a nice uplifting kind of freshness in that opening, which is very, very nice. Now, Midnight Hour does have a similar DNA to Creed Aventus. It's not a clone, it's not a dupe by any means, and if you spray them next to each other, they smell obviously completely different, but it does share a very similar DNA. Instead of the pineapple that you get with the Aventus, it's pretty much replaced with the mango note in here. So, if you're a huge fan of Aventus, you like the fruity Aventus batches, not so much the smoky, woody, dark batches, you're absolutely gonna love this fragrance without a doubt. It's kind of like mango Aventus with oud. That's pretty much how I would describe it. So if you love Aventus, you're gonna love Midnight Hour, but it is not a clone by any means, just similar. Yeah, very solid fragrance. Now, this one is pretty unisex to be honest with you, just because of the nice fruity mango opening and then kind of musky patchouli dry down. So I think it will work perfect both ways. If you're a man, you can definitely rock this one. If you're a woman, you can definitely rock it as well. Yeah, I'm just so happy to have an oud fragrance that I can pull out in the spring and summer because oud is actually probably my favorite note, to be honest with you guys. Definitely top three, but might be my favorite of all time. Um, and yeah, this one's gonna work perfect for me in the spring and summer with that nice juicy, fruity mango in the opening and the dry down being very woody and earthy. So yeah, I love Midnight Hour and I'm so happy to have this within my collection. I'm definitely gonna be getting a lot of wearings out of this. And the performance with Midnight Hour is very, very good. It's probably one of the best out of all 17 that they have within the Icon collection now. So yeah, about average or maybe even slightly above average when it comes to longevity and projection. 
definitely satisfied with this. So the next fragrance we're gonna be speaking about is actually gonna be Tuberose Overdose. And every time I read that, I always wanna say Tuberose New, which is of course from Tom Ford, which is a very popular Tuberose fragrance, which I actually love. I just smelled it not too long ago. And I love the note of Tuberose if it's done right. Obviously Tuberose is a white floral, and sometimes it can be a little bit dirty. Sometimes it can come across very like um, almost dated and clean. But this one here is done very, very well. So let's go ahead and spray this one as well and remind myself of Tuberose Overdose, which by the way, I love that name. That's an awesome name. So obviously you're gonna be expecting a ton of Tuberose and a ton of Tuberose is exactly what you're gonna get with this fragrance. In the opening though, you do have a nice fruitiness from a very crisp green apple that makes it very vibrant, very fruity and almost juicy like as well. That opening is done very nicely with the crisp green apple. Now with Tuberose Overdose, this one took me by surprise. Honestly, guys, I thought Midnight Hour was going to be my favorite within the three. This one is right there alongside Midnight Hour. I absolutely love Tuberose Overdose, man. This is such a good fruity white floral fragrance. Alongside that crisp green apple, you do have a nice black currant note in here as well and a little bit of ginger. It's not as much ginger as you would find in Midnight Hour, but it is there in the backbone of the opening. And as it dries down a little bit after that opening, you do have that tuberose that comes in very, very heavy alongside jasmine, which you guys know I love jasmine. Dra Jasmine's probably my favorite floral note alongside rose. So you do have a nice earthy kind of sophisticated jasmine note within this fragrance. And you also have a very nice peony note as well. Now, when I think of the note of peony, I do think feminine. Peony is not a note that I usually pull for by any means, unlike rose, tuberose, or jasmine, which are all three of some of my favorite floral notes. But peony for me, guys, definitely leans more in the feminine direction. And that's just my opinion. Of course, at the end of the day, you can wear any fragrance you want. But for me, peony definitely does lean more feminine. In this one, you do pick up on it a little bit. It's by no means the main note. It's nothing like the tuberose or the jasmine you get within this fragrance, but you can definitely pick it up if you're searching for it. It's also a very creamy fragrance as well because as it dries down, you do have a nice creamy vanilla and a nice woody sandalwood as well. Man, this is so nice. I was actually almost thinking about buying a bottle of tuberose new when I came across it last week, but to be honest with you guys, tuberose overdose might just fit my void for a nice tuberose fragrance. This is done almost pretty much to perfection when it comes to a nice tuberose fragrance so if you love the noto tuberose you're gonna absolutely love this one and we'll touch on performance a little bit with tuberose overdose usually floral heavy fragrances aren't the best performing but with this one i do get about average performance with it it lasts around six or so hours on my skin and projects heavily for around like two hours or so so yeah nothing really to complain about with tuberose overdose for being a very potent kind of a long lasting floral fragrance. So yeah, I absolutely love this one. And this will obviously work best in probably the spring, summer, even though it does have that kind of sweet, uh, creamy dry down. So it can almost be a signature scent. And as far as if it leans feminine or masculine, yeah, I would not say this leans masculine by any means, but for me, I will definitely wear this one. It's not the most feminine out of all three of these. That one's coming up next, but this one is pretty much right down the middle. I would say Midnight Hour leans slightly more masculine, even though it is pretty unisex as well. This one is straight down the middle, both men and women can pull it off perfectly. And then Velvet Pomegranate, which we'll talk about now, might lean a little bit far more feminine. So let's talk about the next one now. Okay, so let's go ahead and spray Velvet Pomegranate on my arm. I'm pretty much gonna be smelling like a bunch of different things by the end of this video, because unfortunately I ran out of test strips that I have to rebuy but let's go ahead and spray my inner elbow with velvet pomegranate let's see as usual very nice distribution from the atomizer so with velvet pomegranate to me this is definitely the most feminine leaning one out of all three of these fragrances by far in the opening of this fragrance i do get a ton of um pomegranate and a ton of pear in the opening this is a very fruity fragrance. Now, pomegranate is very similar to the note of Lishi, which is found in many female fragrances, at least very heavily. So it does kind of have that perfume vibe. So if you go to like a woman's counter, 
uh, at your local kind of like Dillard's, Macy's, uh, something like that. It does have that kind of DNA that you would find within a lot of those fragrances. But it is a very, very nice one. My fiance actually has worn this a couple times to test it out and stuff like that and give me feedback. And she absolutely loves it. She's gotten comments with this fragrance by her coworkers and stuff like that, loving it as well. And she said the performance is very good with this fragrance as well too. So yeah, she had no complaints about Velvet Pomegranate. Um, I haven't gotten many testing with it besides just testing at home like that. I haven't actually given it a full wearing outside or anything, but with me guys, it does, like I said, have that huge pomegranate and pear note in the opening of this. So it makes it very, very feminine. So it does kind of have like a, a playful kind of juvenile kind of vibe to this fragrance as well, just because it is very fruity. As it starts to dry down though, you do have the tuberose note in this fragrance, just like you have in tuberose overdose. It's a very similar tuberose, but it is obviously not as heavy as in the other one, but it is definitely there. And you also have jasmine as well, a very nice kind of exotic jasmine note. And for me, from my testing at least, my favorite part is absolutely the dry down, where you will find your nice kind of warming, creamy vanilla, and you have patchouli and musk. So patchouli, musk, and all those are some of my favorite notes. So it does kind of um, make it a little bit more sophisticated with that patchouli note that you get in the dry down. Even though it is, does take quite a long time to actually reach the dry down of this one because that opening, guys, lasts a very long time. But at the end of the day, I really do enjoy this fragrance, but I just don't see myself really reaching for it that often. I would much rather smell this on a woman, but that's just my opinion. Of course, you can wear what you want, but for me, I'm definitely sticking with the Tuberose Overdose and Midnight Hour. With these three fragrances, guys, these are some of the best bang for your bucks that you can get as far as the quality of the juice, the performance of them, and the price you're paying. I am absolutely so impressed with the whole Banana Republic line. I might even have to do a re-ranking since these three have entered the Icon Collection. But if I were to actually rank these three as of now, guys, I would have to honestly say, I would honestly have to rank Midnight Hour my favorite just because it does have that similar Aventus DNA, which I'm a huge fan of with a twist of that mango. And it's an oud fragrance that you can wear all year round, which is awesome. And then second place is of course, Tuberose Overdose. This is a phenomenal Tuberose heavy fragrance that will fit perfect within my collection. Every time I'm craving a Tuberose fragrance, I'm gonna be reaching for this one. And then wrapping it off, coming in at the last place, even though it's not a bad fragrance by any means, just for me, not my favorite, is Velvet Pomegranate. Just because it is very, very feminine. A little bit too feminine for me. Even though I actually wear a ton of floral fragrances, this one is definitely one that is a little bit daring on me at least. But yeah, Velvet Pomegranate is number three, even though it's a lovely pomegranate pear fruity fragrance. So. That's gonna wrap up my overview of all three of these fragrances. Let me know down below if you actually enjoy the Icon Collection, if you're gonna pick up any of these three or if you've actually smelled any of these three yet. But if you do pick them up, like I said in the beginning, make sure to use my code FRAGHUNTER15 for 15% off these so you would save some money. But that's gonna do it. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll catch all you guys in the next upload. Take care, everybody.